James Irv, and I'm uh, working uh, with the machine guns for the B-17. The airplane has 12 guns, and six of them are assigned to uh, the project that I'm on, where we must provide a support system for the guns. So here we have the gun as it would be delivered to us, and it's not a real gun. It is a uh, replica of a 50 caliber gun. And in order to support it in the airplane, it has to have a support structure. And so they are available in the, uh, in the industry that provides uh, replica equipment for the airplanes like this. But we found that those were quite expensive, so we decided to make our own. And this is very similar. It's functionally the same as what would be used in the real B-17s, but we have made it with a combination of tubular sections and steel plate stock. The brackets up here were originally cast. We made them out of two pieces of plate welded together. The bottom, which also picks up the back of the gun and the bottom, was made out of six pieces of plate cut, holes put in them, welded together. That was also originally a cast part. Uh, we needed to have uh, handles for the gun, and uh, the original handles were cast Bakelite material. Uh, these were made in my shop at home out of walnut, and we believe we'll have the only B-17 with walnut gun handles. So once that part is fabricated and put together, the gun is mounted into it, as we see here, with the gun. And, but it's not finished yet at that point. In addition, the original support system had a cast back part of the uh, support. And this is what we have made to be the replica of the replicas that are made for the uh, airplane. Uh, this is the trigger mechanism. It would sit on the gun. It will eventually get welded on to the support that, in that fashion. And uh, when it's welded, then it is supported basically in that position. And that gives you the simulated trigger mechanism, which uh, we fabricated and we see one separately here. All of this was originally one cast part with the triggers inserted into, a, into the position like that. In, the, uh, in a real gun, these triggers would then be attached to the firing mechanism at the back of the gun itself. Our guns will not fire, but we do have the triggers that simulate the firing operation. Over here in this area, the, uh, we will have the twin guns for the tail are supported in a slightly different fashion, but very nearly the same. Uh, it has an, an additional bracket up here that the independent guns uh, the other four of the six that I'm working on, two would be for the waist guns on the uh, aft side fuselage positions, and two are the whisker guns for in the front where the bombardier and navigator would have use of them. So they are, uh, they will also have another special bracket that we see down here, which is not quite finished. But that bracket would be what latches the guns in a stowed position when they are not in, uh, oper in operating condition. Uh, this is a, a bracket that we also fabricated out of uh, a number of pieces. They were originally cast parts, but we don't do casting. But we can bend sheet metal and bolt it together to provide the same function as the cast parts that are original equipment. So this will sit underneath 
the pair of guns and pick up the guns at these two attach points, whereas on the independently mounted guns, a bracket like this, which again was made out of tubular stock and plates. Uh, for instance, this ring there, which is a half inch thick, was cut out of a flat sheet of steel and the holes was put, were put in there and welded with these straps on. This slips over the barrel as we see over here on this gun that is mounted, but on this gun that is still to be put into a support bracket, would have this mounted like so, comes down, and then that is what is helping to hold the gun into the, into the uh, support bracket that we showed earlier.